Hi there everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I have the pleasure to talk to you about uh, fetal blood and fetal circulation. And so let's let's get right into this conversation. And so the the reason that I want want to talk to you about this is that it's it's really cool that inside of the fetus, okay, so this is the growing baby inside the mother, there's a there's a few different vessels and uh, some interesting things that are happening uh, that are unique to the fetus in terms of circulation. And so, you know, the question right out of the gate might be for you is like, well, why would the fetus have any different of a circulation than, uh, say, a newborn baby? Okay, so I'll just put that out there as a, a sort of a, uh, a, a, a curious question uh, right out of the gate. And so let, let's begin with a, with a review of the placenta because I think that's really important. So when you, when you think about it, so say this is the baby over here. Okay, and so we're inside the uterus. This is the umbilical cord. What is the umbilical cord? Well, it's this Wharton's jelly, but there's blood vessels in it. And two of these vessels are considered to be umbilical arteries. And they're artery, remember, because you're coming away from the baby. And if, you're, and if the blood's coming away from the fetus or baby, it's deoxygenated because you want to go to the placenta, which is shown here, in order to get oxygen. And so let me just trace this. So here, here it is. Here's the umbilical artery, one of them right here. And so this portion of the placenta right here that makes up the, the, the fetal part of the placenta is known as the chorionic plate. And this chorionic plate uh, protrudes by forming chorionic villi, which increases the surface area for the possibility of exchange. And so these capillaries come in here, and then you're like, well, what is this? This is the mother's blood reservoir. And you're like, how did that blood reservoir get in here? Well, if you consider this side of the placenta, which is the basal plate, the mother has this, in the uterine, uterine wall, this myometrium, which is really muscular, and then it has the endometrium. There's a lot of blood vessels, and what's really remarkable about this is that these uterine blood vessels in the in the basal plate literally like leak blood into this area. So the these villi are actually like sticking into it's like putting your hand into a, a pool of blood. And so with your fingers are like these chorionic villi, and then that's where oxygen is being picked up. So oxygen's going into the circulatory system of the fetus and then it all culminates back in this blood vessel known as the umbilical vein and the umbilical vein is going toward the fetus and that makes perfectly good sense because the fetus needs the oxygen needs the nutrients from the blood like glucose it needs amino acids and then likewise the baby gives off carbon dioxide, which is then diffuses into this blood reservoir, and then ultimately it gets picked up by the drain, which is these uh, veins in the basal plate. And so, uh, kind of a cool diagram here on this. So, like like a, I don't know, like a jacuzzi, the, like the, the basal plate is just releasing red blood cells uh, into this pool. It's kind of unusual. Usually blood is always in in a vessel, but it's unusually that it's in this reservoir of blood. And then again, the baby um, has these chorionic villi, which is then picking up the oxygen and then heading back toward the fetus in the umbilical vein. So the umbilical vein is highly oxygenated. So here it is, umbilical vein is coming toward the baby from the placenta, and then the umbilical arteries are going away to pick up oxygen from the placenta. But the placenta does so much more than, if that wasn't enough to, to provide oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients, but it also acts as an endocrine gland. It really produces, it's glandular, so it, the cells secrete hormones, these steroid hormones that are very important called estrogen and progesterone, and that helps uh, the uh, uterine uh, environment develop so that the fetus uh, can survive. Um, if you recall, the corpus luteum in the, in the ovary was producing a lot of estrogen and progesterone, but now the placenta takes over at around the second month and produces, through the rest of pregnancy, large amounts of estrogen and progesterone. And that, of course, uh, uh, helps the baby develop and it gets the mother ready for birth. And speaking of getting the mother ready for birth, it also produces, I think, a very interesting hormone called relaxin. 
which then targets the ligaments that are associated with the pelvic bones, um, which will relax the pelvic bone such that the baby will be able to be delivered more easily. And then it also produces, if that isn't enough, it also produces a, a hormone called lactogen, which helps the mammary glands develop in anticipation of the baby so that the, the mammary glands can produce milk. So that's kind of interesting. So let's get into this fetal circulation. So that question that I asked you at the beginning uh, of this conversation, it's like, well, why would there be any differences? Well, maybe you know the answer to this, but I'll, I'll, I'll share what, what my thoughts are. That if the lungs inside the baby are not really doing what, what you normally think lungs are doing, which are uh, gas exchange, because the baby is actually submerged in amniotic fluid. They're not functioning in the same capacity as a newborn baby. So you don't really, if you're considering the architecture here, you really don't want necessarily the, the blood to be spending a lot of time in the lungs, okay? So that's one of the, one of the conversations that I wanted to have uh, and talk about this. So here, let me do this. So here's the baby, in case you get some orientation here. Here's the baby, right here, here's the fetus, here's the placenta, we were talking about this. So here's that umbilical vein. So let me, let me go red here for umbilical vein. So this is really, you know, super fuel, lots of nutrients, lots of oxygen, it's coming up here, umbilical vein. And so what you're doing, one of the first places that the blood goes inside the fetal body is it starts to enter into this into the liver of the fetus. Now, the thing is, the liver is still developing. And so as it turns out, let me just follow this along. So you're coming along right here. And so some of this oxygenated blood will travel into the liver. But really, what I want to emphasize is that there's this little vessel right here that connects the umbilical vein right into the baby's inferior vena cava. Now you may recall, this is a very large vein in the body, and the inferior meaning it's below the heart. This is bringing blue deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. So the goal is to get the blood to the heart. And so this little shortcut right over here is called the ductus venosus. And so this is unique to fetal circulation. Um, if, it, if some of the blood does not travel in the ductus venosus, and so do you notice here it's traveling and it's connecting right here? What, what else would it do? Well, it would just simply branch off and go into the, into the liver and uh, provide oxygen, but then ultimately um, through the hepatic vein, it'll ultimately come back into the inferior vena cava. So basically the blood's going into the inferior vena cava. And do you notice how it's colored sort of like purplish here because it's not fully oxygenated because it's mixing in with some of the deoxygenated blood of the inferior vena cava. And so what's happening, let me go purple, just to sort of em emphasize this point. So where is it doing, what's it doing? It's entering into the right atrium. Now what normally occurs is that the blood would then go into the right ventricle, and then the right ventricle would pump the blood through the pulmonary uh, vein to the lungs in order to get oxygen, okay? So it, that, that does occur. So some, some of the blood goes up the pulmonary uh, veins and it goes into the lungs. But as I was saying before, you really don't want uh, all of your blood doing that. You really you want the blood to really participate in the systemic circuit more than the pulmonary circuit because the lungs aren't really providing the oxygen. So I'm going to go over this really briefly and I'm going to try to create a, a separate video discussion on the uniqueness of the fetal heart, but I'll just say this there's literally a hole that's found between the right atrium and the right ventricle. It's called the foramen ovale, and that allows for some of the blood to move between the right atrium and the left atrium. Okay, so not all of the blood would be going down in, into the ventricle. And then the blood would come into the left ventricle and get pumped up out of the aorta. So that, that helps to bypass blood going to the lungs. And then if that isn't enough, when the left ventricle pumps uh, to the rest of the body, okay, that's, uh, okay, I'm sorry, when, when the right, when the right ventricle pumps to the lungs in this pulmonary artery, there's also this new little connection 
from the pulmonary artery to the aorta called ductus arteriosus. So some of this blood goes right into the, the uh, aorta. So therefore, even less blood goes into the lungs. So I'll come back to that a little bit later. So let's, let's look at this aorta. So the aorta is coming down like this. And what's happening is this, this sort of purplish red oxygenated blood. Okay, it's coming down, it can go into the kidneys, the rest of the body, but I just want to connect where it gets back into the into the umbilical cord. It comes down the abdominal aorta, it travels down what's known as the common iliac artery. And then this is again into the legs of, of the fetus. And then as it's coming down like this, it branches off in what's known, and there's two branches on both sides, is symmetrical, this internal iliac artery. And these two internal iliac arteries will become the umbilical arteries, will become the umbilical arteries, which are taking the deoxygenated blood away from the baby towards the placenta to get oxygen. Okay, so that's unique. So uh, here's my <laughs> my cartoon drawing of this. And so uh, if it wasn't clear on the other one, I'll sort of an try to animate this if that's okay. So here's the here is the let's start with the oxygenated blood. So here's the oxygenated blood. If you may know what this is, this is the umbilical vein. Okay, this is the umbilical cord. Now we're now we're entering into the this is the belly button. Now we're into the fetus, which is over here. Okay, so the umbilical vein is taking oxygenated blood up into the body, right in here. This is the uh, the portal vein, which is going into the liver. Okay, here's let me go liver here. Just draw that in, like that's really large gland. Uh, here's the diaphragm that's coming across this big muscle. And this is, of course, the heart, which is sitting right on top of the superior to the diaphragm, which is very close to the liver. Okay, so what we have here is the oxygenated blood is then taking a shortcut into the inferior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava. And this little avenue right in here, that little street is called ductus venosus. Okay, so that oxygenated blood is, in a way, bypassing the liver. So there is some blood going to the liver, but most of the oxygenated blood is traveling in the ductus venosus and, and going into the inferior vena cava. And then once it's in the inferior vena cava, as we talked about, um, which is uh, going to enter into the right atrium. This is the right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. The idea here is to when the blood flows into the right ventricle, the idea is you don't want a lot of blood going into the lungs. So some of it is traveling to the foramen ovale over here. And then some of it is again, uh, traveling through the other connection into the aorta. But ultimately, this deoxygen, this oxygenated blood, not as much as the pure here is coming off the aorta. So this is the aorta. It's coming off the heart like this and it's traveling down the abdominal aorta, and this is the, the internal blood vessels, which are coming off of the iliac uh, artery, which will become the umbilical arteries, and then heading back toward the fetus, okay? And so, uh, again, a nice shot of, of those uh, internal uh, iliac arteries, which are becoming the umbilical arteries right here, and that's heading through the umbilical cord back to the baby. Here's a, a picture right here showing how the ductus uh, venosus is connecting to the uh, vena cava right over here. So the umbilical vein is carrying oxygenated blood and, it, and it's a lot of that is going into the via the ductus venosus uh, into the interior vena cava. And that's what I wanted to emphasize in this particular video, the ductus venosus. And again, where is that in this diagram? Uh, again, here's the placenta, here's the, here's the umbilical cord right over here. Uh, the oxygenated blood is branching right there in the ductus venosus into the inferior vena cava, which is oxygenating that blood. And again, the idea is to not spend too much time in the lungs. So the oxygenated blood can just simply go boom into the left atrium and then into the ventricle and then up the aorta, 
or if it does go into the uh, pulmonary artery, there's a connection here into the aorta as well. And then when it comes down here, it then enters into these uh, umbilical uh, arteries, which then take you back into the placenta to get oxygen. And so here's a actual placenta, I mean, actual umbilical cord where you could see the blood vessels here being clamped. Uh, I like this diagram a lot. So this is obviously the liver right here, the fetus. This is the, um, uh, the umbilical vein, which is coming in right here, and this is the liver. And so this little branch right in here is, the, is what we're talking about, the ductus venosus, which is bringing that high oxygenated blood into the inf inferior vena cava. The idea is that it's all going, it all ends up in the right atrium. So even if, here's, here's the, uh, the portal vein, even if some of the blood travels into the liver, it's still going to get into the uh, inferior vena cava and it's going to end up in the right atrium. There's no, there's no doubt about it. But this is kind of a shortcut, which provides a lot more oxygen to the blood in the fetus. And then inside the heart, I mentioned again, um, this foramen ovale, which is uh, transferring some of the oxygenated blood from the right atrium right over to the left atrium. And then the pulmonary artery has this little connector right here called the, uh, the ductus arteriosus, which connects right to the, uh, the aorta. Okay, And then ultimately the aorta is going to come down like this into the iliac arteries and then ultimately to the internals, which then become the umbilical arteries. The internal iliac arteries will become the umbilical arteries, which head toward the umbilical cord to the, to the placenta. As you can see here, they're connected to the, the umbilical cord, and then they're getting uh, oxygenated in the chorionic villi right there. So pretty cool. So just to emphasize it uh, in, in conclusion, uh, we got this ductus venosus right here, which is this little shortcut to the inferior vena cava. And then we have um, this really cool uh, foramen ovale, which is right up here, which connects uh, the atria together. And then again, this connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta, which is ductus arteriosus. And then down here, we have the internal iliac arteries, which will become the umbilical arteries, which then go back into the placenta. So from the placenta, uh, you get uh, gas exchange, nutrient exchange, you got hormones happening. But then ultimately, when you go into the fetus, you got some unique things happening because you want to be able to bypass the lungs uh, because they're not really functioning just yet because you're not outside breathing. So I hope that was a pretty fun, pretty interesting discussion on fetal blood and the fetal circulation. So thanks for watching.